welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today. A uh, very interesting day in markets because the NASDAQ was actually down 1.3%. The S&P was down about 0.4%. And the Dow was up 92 points, uh, which was just 28 basis points. So that kind of disconnect between the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ isn't that extreme. And in fact, that disconnect has been there quite a bit the other way lately with the Dow down and NASDAQ up. <clears throat> so I don't think there's anything particularly abnormal about market indices today and even their relative um, performance relative to one another. But energy being up 256 basis points today when uh, communication services and technology were each down over 1.5%. That I'm not sure has happened all year, and if it has, it's definitely not happened more than once. Um, a 400 basis point spread between energy and tech in one day, favoring energy, that is, um, has been really, was very common last year and has been not at all common this year. And so that was kind of the unique thing in today. Energy up 2.56%, technology down one6 communication services down one8 Um and then you got uh, bond yields uh, dr going higher on the 10-year, nine basis points. It's up to 379 uh, as a 10-year yield. So a uh, little continued sell-off in the bond market. Um, and crude oil with that energy rally was up, but not huge, 1.2%. So crude is it sitting at $72.5 uh, a barrel. Um, so really still kind of anchored into that low 70s mark, but, but off of the, the lower level in the mid to high 60s that it's hit a few times lately, but still kind of hovering. So that was the cases, that was the case in the market today. Um, the only economic data point I'm going to talk about, I get into the trade deficit in the written DC today. But um, year over year, total trade imports plus exports was down about 3.2% in the month of April. Yet you had um, trade deficit narrow a little bit. So not, nothing, nothing really uh, overwhelming there. The mortgage applications, I think, is more interesting. is down, I think, 1.7% week over week. But more importantly, it was 27% year over year. So there continues to be quite a drop in, in mortgage applications for new purchases and that year-over-year -year, uh, basis is, is worsening. Um, the thing that I will spend the rest of our time talking about, and I'll just take a few minutes, is the state of the Republican primary. I've gotten a few inquiries from people saying, hey, what do you look at as the market ramifications to the way this race is shaping up? And, you know, markets don't have an opinion today on Vivek's chances versus Chris Christie coming in and other things, there's a one person with one percent, one person with three percent, and you know, I mean, markets don't don't work that way. The the financial markets would be thinking to the other side of a primary, to the general election, to what the lay of the land could be into a general, and I'm still pretty far out from having to write about it. Um, what what actual uh, market projections could be out of different scenarios because we're so far away very candidly from knowing who either party's nominee is going to be and you say well you know look we know the Democrats are have the incumbent president Joe Biden and and I, I certainly understand that I'm not being political or partisan myself when I say this but look I don't know that Joe Biden will end up being the nominee for the Democratic Party I think there's any number of scenarios that people who really like the president, people who don't like the president, people are rooting for the Democrats, people are rooting for Republicans, any number of grown-up, reasonable people could make an argument that Joe Biden may not end up being the nominee, just in terms of the way some of this stuff could shake out and health considerations and age and, and whatnot. So even that, I think, versus most years where the incumbent president's a shoe-in for their party's nomination, some things could still alter differently um, there, and, and yet uh, on the Republican side, it's uh, even more so, obviously, wide open, because there's going to be a real primary battle. You had a person who had been president, um, who, when he was president, suffered significant losses for his own party in the midterm, then lost a re-election bout, and then in the first election after that, a lot of the candidates that he had supported lost. 
So on one hand, you could say, well, there might be concerns for the party to renominate him from an electability standpoint. And certainly if I could wave a wand and, and whatnot, uh, I would say that those electability concerns would be a big deal. But um, that may not matter. I mean, as a, the name recognition and there's still a certain base of popularity there, that he could end up being the nomination nom nominee. So it's way too early. And, and anyone who's done this for a while, I hate, I say this all the time, you guys have no idea how much I hate being a political junkie, but I am one and I have been one my whole life. So I have done this long enough to know that in May, now June, of the year before the year in which the election is going to take place, nobody knows anything about what the nomination battle will look like. In June of 2015, President Trump had not even announced his entrance into the race, let alone begun a polling at 1%, let alone begun a rampage through the field that would result in him running away with the nomination. Um, you have a very similar story, by the way, in 2007, when Barack Obama defeated Hillary Clinton for the nomination. And uh, so things just change. You know, the Republican side in the same year, Rudy Giuliani, looked like a shoe and ended up just utterly collapsing. And you went through a number of other nominees in that contested race for the Republicans in 08. So Chris Christie entered the race uh, yesterday. Vi former Vice President Mike Pence has entered the race. Um, uh, go the governor of North Dakota is a billionaire who, who most people never heard of. He's now entered the race. I don't think you're going to end up with more than seven candidates, and I think that will end up going to four or five before Iowa, and then probably two or three after Iowa and New Hampshire. That's probably how it'll go. So the political side of it, if you're interested, uh, you're going to hear little tidbits from me along the way because I can't help myself. But um, you're going to hear plenty more than tidbits anywhere else you get your news and information along the way. So you don't need us for that. But I will be evaluating policies. You know, if Vivek has, is not a viable candidate, but he has something interesting to say about the Fed, I'd be happy to look at that and dissect it and what the actual policy platforms are. A lot of this stuff becomes cult of personality. I don't think you're going to hear a lot of real substantive policy uh, proposals from the Trump campaign. It's not really his shtick. It's not what he thinks he needs to do to win the nomination. But you may hear some more interesting policy things from Governor DeSantis or from uh, Vice President Pence that could, you know, warrant us looking at it from a policy standpoint. Certainly as the Biden administration announces more of their intention and however things shape up with the Democrat primary, whether it's tax or trade, or, or whatnot, I, I would be covering it from the aspect of financial markets and economic uh, implications. But we're, that's pretty premature right now. I think, you know, we're into the political side of it. Uh, a lot of this stuff is kind of sport for people. And as the debates go down in August or a couple months away, a little over a couple months away from the first debate, um, and then plenty of time still over six months until either the Iowa or New Hampshire uh, primaries on the Republican side. So that's the lay of the land there. Uh, there are particular questions that are of interest as it pertains to expected ramifications in the economy and in financial markets as a result of some of this electoral uh, stuff. Feel free to shoot it to us, questions at thebonsongroup.com, and I'll address it. That's where I'm at now. Hopefully that gives you a good, honest assessment. That's where we are today in the D.C. today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and thank you for reading. Mm -hmm.